A small chain of islands in Scotland is hoping to be a big part of the world's push for an all-renewable future and sustainable power grid. In this tiny archipelago, it's about going with the ebb and flow and harnessing one of nature's most powerful forces, water. Our Maggie Rooley reports. The Orkney Islands can feel like a world away. Exposed off the northern tip of Scotland, for millennia they've been constantly battered by Arctic winds and powerful seas. You can just feel the power of nature here, from this wind you see whipping across the island all year long to these massive waves we're watching crash offshore. It's this power that this tiny island chain taps into to become a global leader in developing renewable energy. Today, the waters off these windswept isles have become one of the world's biggest experimental labs for tidal energy, with more turbines tested here on this tiny archipelago than anywhere else in the world. Whoa, we got some movement here. Our boat pulls up alongside Orbital Marine Power's newly built O2 turbine, the most powerful of its kind. Right now, behind us is generating enough power to power 2,000 homes. Yep, as we speak. It's the size of a jumbo jet floating on the ocean surface, anchored to the sea floor by four chains, each weighing more than 300 tons. When we're at peak power at two megawatts, there's as much thrust that goes through the mooring chains as a jumbo jet taking off. We're hanging on tight with Daniel Wise, the ops specialist Ooh, behind the new turbine. The rough seas bounce us around. We just got a little splash. Um, explain the difference between the waves that we're feeling and the tide, what is actually powering this machine. When you go to the beach and, and you see that all the water's gone and it's low tide, and then a few hours later, all the water's back and that's high tide, it's the movement of water around, uh, around the, the sea. So you get wave power technologies and you get tidal power technologies. This is a tidal power technology. But the turbines holding on tight, floating where the Atlantic Ocean meets the North Sea, home to some of the strongest tides in the world. It's incredible. It almost looks like the orbital's moving right now, but really, that's the tide. It is absolutely ripping underneath us. You can almost think of it like a powerful river that changes direction every six hours, four times a day. Just this massive rush of energy that turns those underwater turbines like clockwork. Tidal is one of the only renewable energies that is consistent and reliable, and it's a resource that never runs dry. The source is free, like a bit like wind, but it's entirely predictable, so you know how much power you're going to be ge generating at any specific point in time. The tide is entirely predictable hundreds of years into the future. William Manal grew up on these islands, and he's worked at Orbital Marine for the last decade. We have to site the tidal turbines where there's the most tidal energy, and that's where the flow is moving the fastest. The company's latest device looks like a sci-fi movie in real life, with massive corkscrews twisting underwater. It's kind of like taking a wind turbine, flipping it upside down, and letting the tidal current rotate the blades. As the tide turns, the rotors simply reverse, and that ebb and flow turns into a constant power stream. Right now, it doesn't, doesn't look like there's much going on yeah. because all the action is be beneath the surface of the water. We have two large 20-meter oh. diameter rotors that are slowly turning, extracting the energy out of the tide and turning it into electricity. The whole thing can be controlled miles away by these computers back at the office. So that's what's happening here now? Yes. Tidal machines are still relatively new, and more research needs to be done on how they could impact marine ecosystems. But so far, early research shows that there's little immediate danger to wildlife, and the threat to the environment's less than other projects like offshore drilling. In the number of years that we've been, been operating tidal turbines and all the, all the studies that we've done, there's never been a single recorded strike from a marine mammal on a tidal turbine, so it's, so it's a very benign technology. The turbine's been so successful that combined with other renewables, the Orkney Islands now produce more energy than the small population of 20,000 can use, more than 120% of what they need. I think to a degree Orkney is a vision into the future. The real special thing is the predictability of it. Matthew so Finn's the commercial the director for the European Marine Energy Council, headquartered on the islands. And that predictability is great in terms of smoothing out the grid. That's kind of the holy grail of renewables to be that consistent. But he acknowledges that at the current cost of multi-million dollars per machine, it's still too expensive for widespread use. 
But the main thing is scaling up. And when you scale up, the costs reduce because you're manufacturing more machines, it's cheaper, the supply chain comes into play. Um, so we do see this happening over the next five to 10 years and it becoming competitive, um, initially in kind of niche applications um, and then mainstream applications. As the tech advances, so can its impact. Orbital hopes to one day create an array of turbines with multiple machines linked up, similar to a wind farm. And the UK government says there's enough potential in marine energy to meet up to 20% of the UK's current electricity demand. The overall capacity of the industry is, is never going to be as big as, as offshore wind, that, that's a bigger resource. But what we can offer is a predictable energy source um, that, that's a premium product to the, to the grid. And what's created here on the Orkney Islands will be used in tidal currents around the world, including places in the U.S. This tiny island chain betting big on a resource that will never run out, hoping to help the world chart a course towards an all-renewable future. Maggie Bruley, ABC News, the Orkney Islands. Hi everyone, George Stephanopoulos here. Thanks for checking out the ABC News YouTube channel. If you'd like to get more videos, show highlights, and watch live event coverage, click on the right over here to subscribe to our channel. And don't forget to download the ABC News app for breaking news alerts. Thanks for watching.